Zombies are typically portrayed as a fictional undead creature created through the reanimation of a human corpse. Intimately tied to this word is a zombie apocalypse, which is the breakdown of society as a result of an initial zombie outbreak that spreads throughout the planet. In this video we are going to be looking at 5 scientific ways a zombie apocalypse could actually happen. Parasites that turn victims into mindless, zombie-like slaves are fairly common in nature. There's one called Toxoplasmosa. This is a microorganism that infects rats but can only breed on the inside of cat's intestines. The parasite knows it needs to get inside the cat for it to reproduce, so the parasite takes over the rat's brain and intentionally influences it to approach cats so it gets eaten. Humans and rats aren't all that different. That's why they use them to test our drugs. All it takes is a more evolved version of Toxoplasmosa, one that could do to us what it does to rats, and we will all become mindless zombie-like slaves too. There are certain kinds of poison that slow your bodily functions down to the point that you'll be considered dead, even to a doctor. Although the victims can be brought back under the effect of drugs like Dutorostromodium, or other chemicals called alkaloids, that leave them in a trance-like state with no memory, but still able to perform simple tasks like eating, sleeping, moaning, and basic movement. This actually happened in Haiti. Clavius Narcissi was declared dead by two doctors and buried in 1962. They found him wandering around the village 18 years later. It turned out that the local voodoo priest had been using naturally occurring alkaloid toxins to basically zombify people, putting them to work on a sugar plantation. This was seen in the movie 28 Days Later. In the movie, it was a virus that turned human beings into mindless killing machines. In real life, we have a series of brain disorders that do the same thing. They were never contagious though, but that was up until mad cow disease came along. It attacks the cow's spinal cord and brain, turning it into a stumbling, mindless, raging beast. If the whole sudden, mindless violence idea seems far-fetched, remember that you are just one brain chemical, serotonin, away from turning into a mindless killing machine yourself. Scientists have tested this by putting rats in deathmatch-style cages and watching them turn on each other. All it will take is a disease that destroys the brain's ability to absorb that one chemical, and suddenly it's a real world 28 days later. So imagine such an evolved disease getting a foothold through the food supply. Say this disease spreads through blood on blood contact, or saliva on blood contact. Now you have a rage type virus that can be transmitted with a bite. There's a lot of controversy about stem cell research. This is because stem cells can basically be used to regenerate dead cells. Particularly of interest is neurogenesis, the method by which they can regrow dead brain cells. Science can pretty much save you from anything but brain death, they can swap out organs, but when the brain turns to mush, you're gone, right? Well not for long, scientists are already able to regrow the brains of comatose head trauma patients until they wake up and walk around again. Couple that with the new ability to keep a body in a state of suspended animation so that it can be brought back to life later, and soon we'll be able to bring back the dead as long as we get to them quick enough. That sounds great, right? Well, a lab dedicated to reanimation research explains how the process of reanimating a person creates a problem. It causes the brain to die from the outside in, the outside being the cortex, the nice part of the brain that makes humans human. That just leaves the part that controls basic motor functions and primitive instincts behind. You don't need the cortex to survive, all you need is the stem and you'll be able to mindlessly walk and eat. Nanobots are microscopic self-replicating robots that can invisibly build or destroy anything. Vast sums of money are being poured into nanotechnology. Scientists have already created nanocyborgs by fusing a tiny silicone chip to a virus. The first thing that they found out is that these cyborgs can still operate for up to a month after the death of the host. According to studies, within the next decade we'll have nanobots that can crawl inside your brain and set up neural connections and replace damaged ones. Someday there will be nanobots in your brain. Those nanobots will be programmed to keep functioning after you die. They can form their own neural pathways, meaning that they can use your brain to keep operating your limbs after you've died. The nanobots will be programmed to self-replicate, and the death of the host will mean the end of the nanobots. So to preserve themselves, they'll need to transfer to a new host. So perhaps the last act of the nanobot zombie would be to bite a hole in a healthy victim, letting the nanobots stream in and set up camp in the new host continuing the plague of runaway microscopic nanobots that will be flooding the planet with the cannibalistic undead. If you have been convinced that a zombie apocalypse is on the horizon, which of these five do you think is the most likely to happen? Let me know in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed the video please leave a like and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with my weekly videos. Also, don't forget to keep in touch on all my social media sites, the links are in the description. See you next time.